Thanks for joining us. I'm David Mulko and we begin tonight with a KGW investigation into new local taxes approved by voters aimed at helping families with young children and people living on the streets. Though it turns out tens of thousands of people have not paid their share because no one told them how, when or how much to pay. Investigative reporter Kyle Iboshi tonight on why some say it all amounts to a bureaucratic blunder. As an accountant, Cindy Turner is a stickler for accuracy. Details, deadlines, and numbers, they matter. There's no room for error, which helps explain why the Tigered woman was so upset after receiving a stern-sounding letter from the city of Portland claiming she'd failed to pay some taxes. Demand of personal income tax owed, immediate action required, failure to respond will result in presumptive taxes and civil penalties being assessed. Turns out the city of Portland was collecting on behalf of Metro. High-income households in Washington, Multnomah, and Clackamas counties were expected to pay a new tax to fund homeless services. Cindy recalled, yeah, she'd supported the tax, but had no idea the bill was overdue. Nobody told her when or how to pay. I do my taxes on TurboTax, and TurboTax didn't mention anything about a local tax for this. And to make matters worse, the city of Portland threatened to tack on penalties and interest for a tax that, again, Cindy didn't know was due last April. It's just frustrating because I feel like there should have been a little bit more communication and a little bit more understanding the first time out that really taxpayers had no idea that this was happening. Nearly 20,000 high-income households have already received or will be getting one of these letters warning they didn't pay Metro's newly created homeless services tax or Multnomah County's preschool for all tax, which voters overwhelmingly approved in 2020. Both taxes target individuals who made more than $125,000 annually or couples who brought in more than $200,000 combined. Both Metro and Multnomah County said they tried to alert taxpayers by reaching out to employers, accountants and tax preparation firms. But clearly, not everybody got the message. Even the popular tax preparation software TurboTax didn't warn taxpayers who were likely to owe. I think there's always an element that you hope you could do more. Um, Eric Ariano with, uh, is Multnomah County's chief financial uh, officer. Just, we contemplated sending out um, communications to all residents of Multnomah County, um, but didn't want to create confusion uh, for those that did not owe the tax. So far, Metro has collected $202 million in taxes. Multnomah County has raked in $241 million. Both say it's too early to accurately calculate a compliance rate, but early data suggest roughly 33% of those eligible have yet to pay Metro's homeless tax. For the roughly 20,000 people who might owe and got letters, they'll be charged penalties and interest. Could you show greater leniency to these people? It's important to remember here that the median interest charge uh, for folks whose taxes were due in April 2022 and have not paid yet is $47. And every time somebody has requested a uh, penalty waiver from the city of Portland, it's been issued. So um, there's a lot of leniency being issued at this point. Taxpayer Rex Lindemann sees it otherwise. He argues Metro did a lousy job notifying people the tax was due. So all penalties and interest should be waived. I just think to be equitable, they need to go back and give everybody that money back. Lindemann adds taxpayers shouldn't have to request a penalty waiver either. The government should just make things right. If they're waiting for people to ask for the penalty refunded to them, I think that's, a, that's shameful, I think. It's not fair to the other taxpayers at all. Both Metro and Multnomah County explain they had a tight timeline to set up and begin collecting the new taxes, which only apply to a small portion of the population. Accountant Cindy Turner argues it's no excuse. Remember, it's the details. Taxpayers should have been alerted before getting nasty letters about unpaid bills. It just felt wrong. It just felt wrong, you know, and I, I just don't think that government should operate that way. If government's trying to be transparent and and they want us to support their services, they want us to support their taxes, their bonds, all of that. They need to recognize their part in how it impacts us as a taxpayer. Kylie Boshi reporting tonight. By the way, there is a link on how to pay in Kyle's article that's up right now on KGW.com. If you have a story idea for Kyle to investigate, you see it here. 
Give them a call at 503-226-5041. You can also email callkyle at kgw.com. Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now. More than 15,000 people are now confirmed dead across Turkey and Syria as for a fourth straight day. Search teams are looking for signs of life in the aftermath of a devastating 7.8 earthquake. New video shows that they have been finding those glimmers of hope. Rescue crews yesterday pulling an entire family out of the rubble to the cheers of a surrounding crowd. But authorities still say more than 72 hours in the time to find survivors alive is quickly running out. Well, back in the Portland area, a man accused of stabbing a stranger in her home has pleaded guilty to attempted murder. Prosecutors say Brian Aguilera stole a meat cleaver from a grocery store last March and went to a Beaverton apartment. He picked randomly, knocked on the door, and then stabbed the woman who answered. She used a baseball bat to fight back and survive, but suffered permanent injuries. Aguilera was sentenced to 12 years in prison. In Albany, police officers shot and killed a man this morning after they responded to a call for someone who was potentially suicidal. Police say the man was armed in his vehicle and family members were trying to communicate with him. Authorities say at one point while trying to talk to him, the man aimed his gun at them. Two Albany officers fired shots. Both are now on leave, which is standard procedure. Corvallis police are investigating. And the Clark County Sheriff's Office says it has pulled thousands of fentanyl pills off the streets. Deputies arrested a 48-year-old man and seized 13,000 pills along with two pounds of meth. This comes a day after authorities teamed up with local school districts to warn parents and kids about the dangers of fentanyl. Sheriff's Office says 57 people died last year in the county from fentanyl related causes. Well, new tonight call at the start of a new chapter in Northeast Portland's Cully neighborhood, a change years in the making that involved busting a prostitution ring, closing a strip club and instead opening something the community asked for. Catherine Cook takes us there. On the corner of Northeast Cully and Killingsworth, you'll find another kind of crossroads. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous building, I believe so. A place where life struggles intersect with a chance at safe, stable housing. And that is part of what the system, you know, does in, in this community. You know, it never lets you get up. Ernesto Fonseca is CEO of Hacienda Community Development Corporation. They build affordable housing all over the Portland metro area. This is their newest project, which opened in December. It's called Las Adelitas. More on that in a minute. It features 140 units, a courtyard where kids can play, and resources to help those who live here. I would say that the most significant change that families feel is peace. And when you have that, you know, that in your life, you can start moving forward with the school, with work, with finding employment, you name it. They hope to have the building rented out by late spring. You know, just excited to get to know my neighbors. Michelle Hornbeck moved here in December. Many of her neighbors are refugees and immigrants. Michelle's path here included homelessness and housing where she wasn't safe. It makes my heart feel warm to, for people to feel that they can come here and be safe. What's now an important part of this community sits on property that used to house the biggest strip club in Oregon. It's a history organizers here don't shy away from. Instead, they use it as a reminder of why the future is so important. The Sugar Shack, as it was called, was for decades a magnet for crime. In 2017, the former owner was convicted on federal charges of tax evasion and running a prostitution ring. With millions in donations from community partners, Hacienda CDC bought the property, which sits right across from their headquarters. The day they took sledgehammers to the old strip club was a day they celebrated. We're trying to rebuild and empower the people that uh, that were affected by many of these you know, uh, activities in the past. For that reason, Fonseca chose the name Las Adelitas, a name born from Adela Velarde. She was a force during the Mexican Revolution. Recognizing the men needed help, she took up arms and led other women to do the same. Those women became known as Las Adelitas. Such a powerful you know, story to me. Uh, so from a place of abuse to a place of empowerment and rebirth, that's what it is. That's what Las Adelitas is all about. From this crossroads in Northeast Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News.